morning, everybody. Uh, I'll be representing myself. I'm not representing the uh, society, uh, but that doesn't mean that I have history with the society. Uh, I'll be talking today uh, about the political history of uh, the ruling family, especially legitimizing the ruling family in Bahrain. Since the beginning of the influx of Al Khalifa tribe to the islands of Awal, Bahrain, to establish their sheikhdom in 1782 by the power of sword, which they called a conquest. Until 1971, the tribe had not gotten any political legitimacy or public acceptance to take over the governance and resources of the state, except that the tribe was protected by the exclusive conventions concluded with Britain in the years 1820, 1847, 1856, 1861, 1880, 1892, and imposed through a serious obligations on the Sheikh In return, Britain promised to protect them against external aggression to their uh, land, maintain the autonomy of their entity, maintain their political and economic interests, protect the interests of their citizens in the abscess, and conduct their foreign affairs. Under this phase, the ruling family expropriated people's properties, lands, and lives. They undertook in plundering, looting everything under their ascendancy, and subjecting people to a system of forced labor under the mentality of the booty and subjects, which the tribe has pursued. After signing the documents that ended the earlier treaties, on the morning of August 14, 1971, Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, chairman of the Council of State, who became prime minister, read the Declaration of Independence and the policy of the new state on behalf of his brother Isa, ruler of Bahrain, who became emir under the announcement of the independence. That was in the presence of a crown prince, Hamad bin Isa, the commander of the Bahrain Defense Force. The Emir intended to establish a political legitimacy based on the popular will, especially since independence has been built on the referendum conducted by the Good Officers Mission mandated by the United Nations in 1970. <coughs> in December 16, 1971, Amir Isa bin Salman stated in an official statement about framing a draft of a modern contemporary constitution for the country that ensures applying the principles of peaceful democracy. To implement that, to implement that statement, a, con a constituent assembly was established by 22 elected representatives, eight appointed by the emir and the 12 ministers representing their positions. The assembly held its first uh, meeting on December 16, 1972 and ended on June 9, 1973. The draft of the constitution was approved by the emir and ratified without any reservations on December 6, 1973. Later on, in December 7, 1973, elections were conducted for the National Council, the legislative authority. Upon that, new upon, upon that uh, the new cabinet was formed on December 15th, with 14 ministers, half of them are or were from were members uh, of the ruling family. The cabinet was and is still headed by Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa. The first meeting of the National Council was held on December 16, 1973. Uh, that's why we can say that the Sheikhdom was framed in a constitutional consensus that allowed a reasonable margin of people's role in, in, in legislation, supervision, and management of the state. That did not last long, as the Emir issued a decree on August 26, 1975 to dissolve the National Council, suspend the parliamentary constitutional articles, and assign the legislative power to the cabinet along with the Emir himself.
This, this supervision on the constitution it dropped the political legitimacy of the emir and the cabinet that was headed by his brother Khalifa bin Salman. In 1999, Hamad bin Isa came to power, succeeding, succeeding his late father and desiring to impose his political legitimacy and assure his inherited rule. In December 16, 2000, the emir announced in a television speech the launch of the National Action Charter project, which he described as the Compact and Allegiance Renewal. Despite the controversy that has prevailed about the credibility of the project, the anxiety, the anxiety about what is required in the outlook section that was in the, in the charter, and the ambiguity of the mechanism of implementation, people had voted in 14th and 15th of Feb 2001, yes to the charter by Pro 98.4 and with a participation rate reached 90.3. A political spring, spring began in Bahrain and continued until February 14, 2002 when Amir Hamad bin Isa announced himself as king due to the new constitution he publicized which grants him as a king wide and absolute powers. This minimized people's powers and breached all the commitments and declarations made before voting for the National Action Charter. A new and previous authorities of the king reinforced autocracy and monopoly by the king who is the head of state and his person is inviolate. The head of Supreme Defense Council and appoints its members. The head of Supreme Judicial Council and appoints judges. Appoints the prime minister and ministers. Appoints the head and half of the national council members. Orders elections of the other half determines the distribution of electoral districts by a decree, calls the National Council to meet by a, royal, by a royal order, and he has the right to dissolve the elected chamber. Also, he has the right to issue decree laws in the absence of the National Council. He declares state of national safety or marital law, appoints civil and military offici officials and diplomatic representatives to foreign countries and international bodies, appoints the head of the financial control office and his deputies and several other powers. On this basis, the ruling family in Bahrain is out of political legitimacy and they are very knowledgeable of that. As the political legitimacy is granted by the people to the governors, not the contrary, where people are the source of powers and authorities. Any governor imposes people to be subjected to his authority by force of arms and the military clearly knows about the absence of his acceptability among people and aware of the lack of political legitimacy, especially since the ruling family has turned on the only two documents which granted them political legitimacy, the Constitution of 1973 and the National Action Charter in 2001. Therefore, the ruling family fears popular pro-democracy movements whose relationship with the Khalifas is based on lack of trust and the absence of allegiance thus break the equation of the sheikhdom and subjects which the ruling family is pursuing. Thank you for listening and I hope I, I could uh, produce this uh, political history in, in a short and I have a paper in, 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 the long, uh, in a longer uh, station. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.